This might sound a bit unbelievable, but it really happened to me about a year or so ago. It still send a shiver through me whenever I think about it. We were planning to go camping on a weekend, so we went and bought all the stuff one would typically bring to a camping trip. We were all excited for this trip, as we hadn't gone on one for quite a while. We were all married, but this was going to just be us guys. We were all friends, and there were seven of us, so it was going to be a rowdy crowd. A friend of ours said he knew a very good spot, because he had been there for like about two years ago. And he loved it. It was like a three hours drive to our campsite. As we got there and got out, I took a quick look around and it looked very creepy. The campfire was surrounded by an area of about 20 feet in diameter. Then surrounding that was just trees and bushes so thick that if one wants to wander at night to do a bathroom break, it will not be easy at all. The friend who lead us here then dropped a bombshell. He said a couple years back, a body was found not far from where we were staying and that people still hear whispering sounds at night when it was very windy. We were a bit freaked out, but then we were all like, okay that will just a perfect atmosphere to some ghost stories at night when we all gather around the campfire. We then did the typical stuff, set up tents, find some logs, cook, and just prepare for nighttime. At around 9pm, as we gathered around the fire, it was pitch black in the forests. The only light source was from our fire. Not even the moonlight was enough to pierce through the thick forest. Every so often, you could hear the sound of the wind going through the trees, like whispering as it passed by us. It was quite a creepy night, but as we were all in a group, we were not that scared. Then the ghost story started. A couple of stories in, I just had to go pee, but I didn't want to wander too far, as my mind was still fresh from all the creepy stories. I stood up, went to the edge of the campsite, turned around, and just did my business there. As I was doing that, I looked out to the dark night and could barely see anything at all. As I was about to finish, I thought I saw a movement out in the night. I looked, and I saw what looked to be a person standing next to a tree and waving at me. I felt all the strength sapped out from my body. I was about to fall, but then I looked again, and it was just a small tree. Because of the wind, it just made it like the tree was moving and waving at me. I had never felt so relieved. I quickly finished everything and power walked back to everyone. When I went to take a seat, I quickly looked back towards that spot and looked away again. A friend who was next to me tapped me on the shoulder and I jumped. He asked me what was wrong, but I just shook my head and said nothing. As I turned to look around the group, I instinctively did a head count. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. I let out a sigh of relief and was about to focus on the stories again and raised a hand to rub my eyes when I suddenly paused and my heart dropped to my stomach. Seven. I counted seven. I did not include myself in the count. If I count myself, there would be eight of us there. My body became cold and I was starting to breathe hard. Out of the corner of my eyes, I could still feel my friend next to me still turning his head to look at me. It was just like he was frozen in time, just sitting there looking at me. I slowly turned to look at him, and he still did not move at all. Just looking at me blankly. I suddenly knew it was a ghost. All I could think of that time was, please don't let it be so. Just let this be a mistake. Then all of a sudden, he just twisted his head up and looked at the moon. He twisted his head so fast I could actually hear a crack in his neck. He then just sat like that, looking up motionlessly. I was so shaken up that when I felt his hand slowly reaching out to touch me, I closed my eyes shut and just prayed that nothing will happen. Then, I felt his touch. It was wet, and when he slowly massaged my shoulder, I suddenly stood up and yelled at the top of my voice. Everyone suddenly jumped up and looked at me in confusion. I ran to the opposite side and looked at the ghost but it was nowhere to be found. I looked at all my friends again, who still looked back at me with confusion in their eyes. I did a quick count, and it was six now. Seven included me. 
I then told everyone what happened, and at first they did not believe me. But when I looked at my shoulder, it was very wet, and the smell was horrible, like it had come directly from the sewer. They were also so freaked out that we called it a night and went into our tents. I was glad that nothing happened that night, and when morning came, I persuaded them to just call it a day and went home instead. The dead don't talk. Or I used to believe that phrase was true, until an incident happened that overthrew all the things I thought I knew about the world. This happened way back when I was still living in Laos. I'm an old man now, and when I was young, I used to think that if you are dead, you are dead. There's no way for you to move or talk anymore. Long ago, I had a good friend in Laos. We lived in the same village, and we were as close as brothers. We hung out every day and went to flirt with girls together all the time. I thought we would always be like that, even if one day we had our own family. That we would both still stay as close brothers. One day, I woke up feeling fresh and was about to go to his house to hang out. I stepped out of my bedroom, and there he was already, sitting down, making a fire. I was surprised, so I went to ask him when he got here and how, because the house was locked. He told me my parents went out, and when they did, he came right at that time. So they let him in. It was even better for me because I didn't have to go to his house then. We sat down and started planning what we were going to do that day. After the planning, he then looked at me and sighed, saying sadly he couldn't do any of those things with me anymore, and for me to do them alone from now on. I looked at him in confusion, but he didn't offer any more explanation. He just continued blowing into the fire. I was about to ask for more, when I suddenly heard my mom shouting for my name in their bedroom. I looked at the bedroom and it got me even more confused, because I thought my friend said my parents were already out. I then looked back at my friend, but there was no one there at all. I jumped up, very startled, and looked around quickly, thinking maybe he had just hid somewhere as a prank. There was no place to hide in our small house. No one was peering around corners either. I suddenly felt cold, so I ran to my parents' bedroom. I saw both my parents in bed. My mom asked me who I was talking to, because I woke them up with my voice. At first, I couldn't say anything. I just looked at them, my mind all jumbled up. My mom could tell something was wrong, so she got up, made me something to drink, and waited for me to relax. After a while, When I felt my body starting to cool down, I told them everything. They were alarmed by it, and my dad told me to wait, and he left after that. About 30 minutes or so later, he came back and looked at me with a strange gaze. My mom asked him what happened. He told her that he went to my friend's house, but he heard that during that night, my friend got out to take a pee, but he slipped and broke his neck. He died instantly. His body was still there at the house, and people were there right now, mourning him. The news shocked me to the core, and I could feel my spirit slipping away. It was not from fear, but from sadness, from the fact that he was no longer in the world. Fast forward to his funeral. It took place in his house, as was tradition back then. The sound of the drum echoed throughout the village, and the sound of the death musical instrument played non-stop. I was there all the way until midnight. I just couldn't believe my eyes. I thought that he was just playing a prank, that he would wake up very soon and tell me it was all just a joke. I kept looking at him, but it was a hopeless thought. I felt that life was so fragile and that you never know what might happen in the future. I wiped away my tears, and when I was about to leave, I suddenly felt a hand grab my foot. I looked around and I saw what grabbed me. It was my friend, who was supposed to be dead. I just froze, not knowing how to react. He then put a finger to his mouth, signaling me to be quiet. He smiled, and he opened his mouth to say something, but I could tell it was hard for him to try to make a sound. His mouth looked very stiff. 
After opening and closing his mouth a few times, it loosened up so he could now speak. He said, Good luck, my friend. I wish I could join you on your adventure, but sadly, mine ends here. Be sad today, but tomorrow, be happy. Live happily for both of us. He then slowly laid back down. Fast forward to the present. I live in the United States now, and I'm an old man now. I am typing this while looking at my sleeping wife. In my heart, I knew my friend sent my wife to me, because I met her very soon after he passed away. He didn't want me to feel sad. I would love to think that I did not waste away any of my years. I have lived a worthwhile and fulfilling life. A life I am proud to tell him about when I meet him again in the afterlife. I always have sleep paralysis. It's just a daily occurrence for me that even if I don't want to get used to it, I still do. I have a friend who still did not have sleep paralysis at all, so he didn't know what it felt like. Every time I told him about my experiences, he just said that was scary, but I could tell it did not have that much of an impact on him. One day, he came to visit me, so I told him to stay the night so we could drink and watch some ghost movies. It was the first time he had slept at my house, and it was also the last time. Since my bed was big, at night I lay on the right side. My little brother lay in the middle, and my friend lay on the other side, next to the wall. This is what he told me happened to him in the middle of the night. In the dead of night, he suddenly woke up, feeling cold. He felt for the blanket and moved it to cover his body. He then stretched his foot out, but then his foot suddenly kicked someone standing at the foot of the bed. He froze, because when he kicked the person, whoever was standing at the foot of the bed did not move at all. It just stood there, in the darkness. My friend got scared, so he quickly retracted his foot and covered his head with the blanket. Not a second after that, he felt the blanket slowly being pulled down. He got so scared, and when he tried to move, He suddenly felt he could not move at all. He was paralyzed. Even if he wanted to scream, he couldn't. He then felt the ghost slowly crawl across the bed towards him. The bed was creaking so much that with every creak, he could feel the ghost getting closer and closer. When the ghost was right on top of my friend, my friend closed his eyes tightly and refused to open them, in fear that he might see something that his heart couldn't take. The ghost then sniffed at my friend for a couple of moments. My friend could feel the breath in his neck, but he still did not open his eyes to check. He could also hear a long croak. When the croaking stopped, the ghost suddenly grabbed my friend's face. There was a brief blackout and then my friend could move again. He suddenly looked up, but there was nothing there anymore. It was just silence. He was so scared that he retracted his feet all the way to his body and slept in a fetal position. In the morning, he told me what happened and said that he had never experienced any sleep paralysis before and that the sleepover was his first time. He was so scared that he had never slept over at my house since then. 